right. Okay, so I'm going to continue painting on this. I'm going to continue painting this painting here. Um, Cheryl was asking, what's what's the sunset in the background? It's just the uh, it's just a default Mac photograph uh, photo. So I don't know what the hell it is. It's just a it's just a, one of the photos that you can select as a background on a Mac. Okay, so what am I doing here? I want. Oh yeah, I'm moving this over here so I can read your chats. I'm gonna put the Ay Jackson here. And over in this corner is where I'll be able to see my own painting when I click on it. So I'm going to click top. There we go. Okay. All right. Forcing myself to do this painting. Forcing myself to do this painting. All right. So I'm going to do this. I'll use this brush. I really don't want to do this. Did I start recording? Yes, I did. Okay. How do you tell? Okay. Uh, okay. I'm gonna to try to make this. Okay. My f my uh, here. I'll show you what I'm looking at. Let me just make it a bit bigger. So here's how it works for me. This is my reference photo. And over here in this section, I don't know if you can see it, this section is where I'll see my own painting. And I like looking at here because it's easier to sometimes see than it is looking straight down, believe it or not. Okay. And there is a, I noticed that this camera here the colors are much bluer than they are in real life. <clears throat> it's probably on like one of the auto settings that auto adjusts because the, the, the reference photo, photo is much warmer. It's got like a yellow orange hue to the whole thing. My, my painting is much bluer, especially when I look on the screen. So it's warmer in real life a little bit. It's kind of chilly in here because I'm wearing shorts. So I'm going to wear a hat. Okay. Um, what can you see? What are you looking at? What's your view? Your view is, uh... oh, hey, Ravenda. This is orange. Do I even need orange? I want yellow. Where's yellow? Oh, here's yellow. That's me, yellow. And it's very, I've got a feeling that the real painting is not as warm in yellow as the photograph. That sometimes happens. <sighs> Taking it's actually quite challenging to take photos of your of your artwork because the lighting makes a huge difference. And sometimes you got to be careful that it's not. You have to make sure, like the goal, your responsibility is to make sure it looks as close to the real thing as possible. But the real thing really is different depending on the lighting settings. Like it's a huge, huge difference sometimes. So, so there, that's all I got to say about that. I forget what I'm saying. Okay, so maybe a bit of orange in there. When I... Why don't I do this? What I've found is that you shouldn't take your photos and uh, take photos of your artwork in direct sunlight because it actually produces something far too intense. Because then you bring it inside and the colors just look so more muted. But also don't take them inside either because uh, artificial lights really are the worst. Like like um, regular incandescents are shit for 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 color, right? Because they can be. Um, artificially warmed up with yellows or they're bright white. Right now my ringing is really goddamn loud, so I might, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. 
it just started uh, giving me a little bit of screaming, screaming aloud. Just started kick, kicking in. So this is when I sort of turn into a bit of a an idiot because I uh, I'm just trying to. Whoa! It really stops me in my tracks, man. It really stops me. It just stops. Stop. Every life just stops when this when this ringing starts. <sighs> okay, I gotta start. Just keep going. Just keep going. <sighs> Went to all right. I don't remember what I was talking about. So I'll do negative space. Oh man. Ooh, it's crazy how loud it is. I know it's so loud it makes me want to barf. It's like this like insane. It's like imagine someone to put a speaker right next to your goddamn head. And you can't turn your head away from the speaker. I'm just beginning to notice all these little details that good old Leiwai did. And I'm, I'm respecting him more. One of the things I mentioned at the very beginning, which is that one of the differences for sure about this painting versus the original is the brush strokes are going to be much more refined in his because his painting is about twice the size of mine. So the brush strokes here, oh, I don't know if I can continue. Oh, I don't know if I can continue it. This is one. Of, oh, it just became so loud. It's like really fucked up loud. Oh, oh. Let's just continue. Have you seen a doctor about the noise? Oh yeah, are you kidding me? I've been to, I've been all the, I got a, I got a thing in my head. I got a fucking, uh, oh, I got a brain tumor in my head. Uh, it causes tinnitus. Got a brain tumor and uh, fucking causes a tinnitus. <sighs> really messes me. So loud. 
It's like imagine the loudest noise. <sighs> All right, okay, just, just keep going. Just gotta keep going. Just gotta keep going. Just gotta keep going. And just uh, keep talking. Just keep talking. Keep talking. And keep going, keep going, and keep talking. Keep talking. Talking helps. Talk. Talking helps. Blabbing on helps. Just keep talking. Okay. Just keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, you gotta keep talking, right? I think I gotta check on my dog. I think she's outside. So let me just go check on my dog one second. <laughs> She looks like she's having an okay time outside. Sorry about that. All right. All right, what's going on here? What the hell am I doing? What kind of bullshit is this? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm always okay. I always figure it out. It just hits. It's once in a while, like, it hits you so hard. It's just like all of a sudden you walk into, like, a... I don't know if you've ever been to, like, a concert. Yeah, like, a, you go to a concert... Or, or uh, like a club or something, and you're next to those giant wall of speakers. It's not like that at all. <laughs> no, but it's just like it's like this. It's overwhelming sound. It's just pounding. It's just like uh, you sort of have to. Yeah, I, I would. I'm always okay. I just gotta wait it out. Sometimes it just comes. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's like a like it just takes you over. So I think I need to do more like warm colors. Okay, where was I? Oh, my eyes are a little blurry. Nice. Do you find it helpful to paint live? It would make me feel so. so Jocelyn, I have been painting for you know since I was a kid. Let's just say so, like forty years, and I uh, I never showed any, but most of my work for. For 20, 25 years, like I'm a very, very, very private person. So I do not like painting live. I'm doing it because I feel like I, I have to push myself. Um, I hate, hate, hate being the center of attention. I'm perfectly happy to be anonymous. But uh, uh, so... I do not find it helpful to be, in fact, it is much harder for me to paint doing this live. Um, 
Because you feel like, you know, you're, yeah, you're, it's, there's people watching you. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing it is because I've been hiding out for, for, for two decades. I've been hiding, basically, because I don't like the attention. And then I got diagnosed with this brain tumor, which scared the shit out of me. Because I actually found out about it by because I started getting this insane ringing in my ear, this tinnitus, and I did not know where it was coming from. So for two months, I started having panic attacks four or five times a day. Because imagine if you had a sound that would never escape, that would that would uh, never go away. And so I was, what I was doing is I was exercising myself to exhaustion, so I could just have, you know. Uh, uh, some kind of peace like I thought I was going crazy it was the w worst experience of my life it was horrible and being an idiot um, I am I didn't go to the doctor it took me two months before I thought it was just it was I'm so unbearable every every hour was a waking horror that's what I was going through and I'm, I'm getting to why I'm talking about painting live so they finally did MRIs and it took it took about I can't remember six months or a year. They had to do multiple MRIs before they finally realized it was a tumor that's inoperable, that's on my auditory nerve. And they, they can't operate on it because if they do, there's a good chance it'll paralyze my face. And it no, won't necessarily fix the, uh, the issue. The, fi the issue is I'm also going deaf. So I'm mostly deaf in this year now because the tumor is right on the auditory nerve. And my brain is expecting to hear something so instead it compensate by, by creating this frequency and it just so happens I happen to have a very loud one I have a very 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 fucking never-ending 24 hours a day frequency in my ear and sometimes it comes on so strong it's like a it's like a punch in the gut you can't even believe it it's like a train going by and it just never ends and so um, one of the, I found that one of the few things that helps reduce it was painting, which is something I love to do. So I started painting more and more because this is all I could do. I was like, I was in a real jam where I couldn't even function. I couldn't even think. Uh, so over time, I realized that one thing that helped a lot was talking while I was painting. And it didn't even matter what I said. It was helping my mind to focus because I've, I've, I've been to the top. See right now it's so loud. I'm just trying to even come up with words. It's like, I'm fighting something. I'm fighting, I'm fighting this, this thing right now just to communicate. It's like, imagine someone's right there screaming your, ah, like that. You try to have a, a normal conversation. It's very hard. So I found that when I was painting and talking, I, I, it would go, it would be reduced. Like it would, it would quiet a little bit. And the other reason why, and so I, I realized, you know, I always knew I was going to be an artist, like full, like that's, my goal was always to retire as an artist. I, I wanted to build, I wanted to make video games and I love technology and I still am doing video game stuff and I'm still involved in technology, although I don't really talk about it here. But I was thinking about a quote. I think it was from David Bowie who said something along the lines that if you're like an artist and you're comfortable, you're not you're not going to reach your potential. You always have to be on the edge of it being hard. And I, and I, and one of the things that for me the hardest thing is being open. Like I'm so fucking private. Like this is insanity what I feel like I'm doing right now. So this each time I do this, like I'm exposing myself, right? So I feel very exposed, and it's not like I'm not a shy person. I just like privacy. So I'm doing this because this really is pushing me. This is really challenging me. But one of the nice side effects has been is that when I'm talking, blah 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 blah, blah, blah and I'm painting, this this thing kind of quiets down a bit for a while and it's like the most amazing sense of relief once in a while i forget it's there like uh, there's about three or four seconds when i wake up every day 
And I'm like, oh, awesome day. And then it comes, and then it's there. And it's like this fucking metal thing pressing down, thinking, yeah. Because the irony for me is my favorite thing in the world was, was quiet. Honestly, my favorite thing was like peace and quiet. So I do this because I have to do this now. I, I don't have a choice. I need to do this to... Uh, it's like... Yeah, I have to do this. I, I or I'll, I'll, I'll lose it, man. But I can't lose. It. I can't afford to lose. It cause I'm a dad. I have to. I can't afford to be a, a wild and crazy artist and irresponsible. I got responsibilities. So I, I have to just suck it up. You know. That's why I do this. I don't know if that makes sense. So sometimes he should pretty much like it'd be great if you just ignore ninety nine point nine per percent of what I say is just me just talk t speaking to keep this thing at bay this fucking monster there's a demon there's a horrible asshole that's constantly there well, I'll tell you it's made me appreciate my life so much more. I always knew, like I always was a very like appreciative person. I think in general, but now more so than ever, because people have it so much worse than me. So it's not like I, I don't want sympathy. I don't, I don't need like people, you know, say, whatever, pat you on the head and shit. Like I don't need that. I don't know. So I'm literally, I'm just talking. I don't even know if anyone's listening, but. This is my own kind of therapy, I guess. It's like therapy. It's exactly so. I think there's more purples in his thing. See, so it kind of passed that wave. That 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 there was a wave there of like some pretty intense. Look what he did. He did this very purpley kind of thing. This is some, this is what Van Gogh would do. Oh, over here, I'm looking at my palette thing. Uh oh, I don't think it's done with me yet. I don't think it's done with me yet. I think it's still it's creeping around. I'm talking about like the sound. It's like it's like. Are you gonna come out again? Are you gonna son of a bitch? <laughs> hmm. like here and he has a thing here and he's got like a more of it I need more green Let's bring in the dark green hmm. oh, yeah there's people that have it so much worse But we're all human. You got everyone has stuff that happens to them. That's a nice color. I'm starting to I'm starting to put my own kind of colors in here. Oh, sorry, sorry. The whole bunch of text I missed. What about soft music? No. So do you ha have that anymore? Do I have what anymore? I have it. I have it to this twenty four seven. Never. <sighs> I have it twenty four seven. Never leaves me. And uh, it's weird because I'm I'm mostly deaf now, meaning that um I can hear out of my left ear, but and the right ear is down. I think it's probably down like twenty percent. I can actually hear in my right ear, and and it's getting worse. Like I feel like it started about two or three years ago, but man, now like I can't hear anything because. It's not just the, the lack of something came out of my ear. It's the fact that the noise from the inside of my head is masking it when people like is masking it volume. So that's that's really frustrating. I, I'm not I'm not afraid of going deaf. That doesn't you know I'd miss the sound of my son's voice. That would be really sad, and I'd also uh, miss music. But there's worse things than going deaf because uh, my grandfather, when he was in his early twenties was on a canoe trip 
and he got an ear infection. He went totally deaf. And then he he raised my mom and my uncle and, you know, just, he must have met my grandmother when he was deaf. And he was such an outgoing guy. He started a stainless steel company and he was just so, he was, he was like one of my heroes. And he could read lips perfectly. But um, I can't read lips. Like, this is a new thing for me. Like, I'm, I get, I'm like, what, what? <laughs> okay, so there's more stuff here. It says, I think you're right. Great. Okay, my eyes. Fuck, I can't see. This. So you don't have any more. Uh, I think you're okay. Here's what I'm doing, guys. I've got. What I'm doing is I'm trying to read, catch up with the text here. I think you're right. Great artists do seem to have private struggles, like they need to push through to create. Yeah, that's true for sure. I am. Not, so there's a delay. There's probably about a 15 second delay between live and then what I see. Um. Have you given a name to the auditory screamer? <laughs> Fucking asshole. That's it. Love the colors. Howdy, Cheryl. Was your job related to art before you started painting for that? Yeah, I mean, in a way, I, I, I developed video games. So I, I was a um, game designer, and I was executive producer, and I also did something called world building level design where I create the world. So I, I, I built two game studios and I ran some larger ones and I ran a couple large projects, all software, video game stuff. So it was, here's a cool thing. Video game, everything I did, in fact, even running a company, all I care about is like, I'm only happy when I'm being creative. And I can tell you building a company from scratch is very creative so i was always satisfied from the creative side that's that's my main thing so i need to do something where i get to be creating something so interestingly enough something i learned was i was actually pretty good at it i was pretty good at it at running a company and and uh like building it from scratch you know like just and and getting the contracts taking care of legal work you know but also uh you know developing the video games from you know, I, I loved it so i was always into video games since i was a kid i used to program video games um, but I was a game developer and still am. I still do a lot of video game work. I do a lot of work on the funding side, help out. Okay, so, what is your, that's why I have a dog? No, I just love dogs. Hey, Cheryl, before you're asking, what was, the, I think you were talking about this. Cheryl was saying, what's that sunset behind? I think you were talking about this. This is just a background image on my Mac. It's like one of the default pictures. Like, I, I you know, you know, you can choose colors or you can just choose a photo. This is one of the default photos. That's what that was. Okay, let me go back to my painting. All right. So hopefully I answered your question, Cheryl. All right. Now, I just love dogs. I waited 10 years before I got a dog, and I had another dog named Donut, and I loved her. She was a golden retriever. She's dumb as a bag of bricks. And then she died suddenly in my arms, just right here, right next to me. We think someone, some fucking idiot, threw some rotting meat in my backyard, because I, I live next to the street here. There's like projects around the corner. So some shithead threw some rotting meat in a bag, and she must have eaten it. So she had like basically like this seizure in my arms, and uh, that was terrible. So I, I've got like the most my someone should try breaking into my house i got so much surveillance now i have because i'm very technically te technologically adept so i've got some crazy ass video surveillance <laughs> all over my house man i've got like redundant systems because <laughs> uh yeah you know like i think i don't think it was intentional and uh i actually had the, the we suspect it was the bag of meat because it was torn open. It was in my backyard. It was right, you know, like where she was, not, you know, just before she came in and start started and started shaking and everything. So now I, I don't fuck like you know. So I'm super paranoid of my. This is my new dog. Well, new dog. She's two years old. I'm gonna go check on her right now. Good girl. Okay. It's pretty cold outside in Toronto, so can't leave your dog outside for too much. Oh, there's more. Uh, 
Remember Dungeons and Dagworth? I know Dungeons and Dragons a lot, but I don't know what Dungeons and Dagworth is. Yeah, poor Dona, I know. Oh my god, it's even more sad. She died. One hour before my son's birthday party. And he had all his friends at the park. We're going to have to have a Nerf war. And I got the phone call because I was there. I was basically with her all night. There was like a special emergency vet. And so I basically almost slept over the whole night with her while she was all bandaged up and hung on the machines and shit. And I finally went home. One hour before, like while we're at the park, getting all geared up with our Nerf stuff. And my son was... I got the phone call that she died, so we went to say goodbye to her. That was kind of gross because she had like brain flu like dripping out of her nose as we were saying goodbye to her. But anyhow, my, uh, we went back to the park where all his friends were and my son gave like a little eulogy. And then they went, he went on and played Nerf. So now I have a very, very good surveillance technology <laughs> around my house. All right. I teach elementary art currently. Oh, cool. My dream is to someday retire and be able to paint or create full time. I would like to do those Instagram videos on my art, but feel so self conscious. You need to give it yeah yeah you know what I just say just do it don't wait don't wait like 20 years like I did oh you're in Montreal yeah Toronto is insanely cold out we just had like about a, a foot of snow <clears throat> but I know I lived in Montreal for a couple years I went to McGill and I remember the winters there they were brutal and somehow winters in Montreal just felt colder. I think it was the wind. Like, I don't know what it was. It just, Montreal winters were just somehow more intense. Yeah, it's like walking. I think I just remember. I think there's you just don't have as much um, Montreal. You just don't have as much cover. Like things, you just feel more exposed for, to the wind in Montreal. So what I'm starting to do now is I, I'm definitely looking up at Iwai Jackson's painting, but as I'm doing it, I'm kind of like thinking like of where I would, I'm doing it, where, how I want to do it differently and if I can make it better in any way. I'm definitely learning some stuff right now about, I'm just, yeah, I'm just I'm, like, I'm learning things. So this is a not a total write off for me. I'm, I'm like picking up some techniques as I look at it, his painting. And that's kind of, that's kind of good. It's always good. You're always learning if you're if you have any sense in your head. You always learn from other people. There's still so much I need to do for this. Like my brushwork is all just so nowhere near as like elegant. I think I should bring a bit more color into there. Oh, see, look, it's mostly past right now. So what I do is I have a kind of a rating. Oh, this should be much more red. Okay, I have a rating for, for the noise level. 10 is the worst sound, is the worst noise you can imagine. 10 would probably make you go instantly insane. It's kind of like busting your eardrums loud, massive, like, fucking rocket ship next to you okay so that's a 10 for me i've never had a 10 a 10 would be pretty goddamn bad i've had nines and nines are pretty terrifying 
Nine is when your only option is to go, and I've done this many times, go bury yourself in your bed. Just put covers over your head. And uh, white noise machines work. I have about, I, I bought, <laughs> I bought almost every noise machine that was on Amazon. <laughs> I have like so many. I, I used to have them all over the house. In every room, I'd have a white noise machine because that would help to some degree. Um, now I don't need that as much. I, I found that, I, I, sort of, I, I just sort of know when, when I have to go and bury myself. And that happens a few times a week. I'm just like, there's no point in me trying to fight it. I just get in my, my bed and I, I put the sheets over my head and I just wait it out. Um, uh, yeah, the other part about, about this is it fucks up your memory. Like, I, like I, I'm constantly forgetting what I'm talking about. Constantly. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was reading some some things here. So, okay. Oh, there's more. I went to last week was minus thirty. Yeah, like with the wind factor, it's crazy. I went to so Cheryl saying I went to Trois Rivières for a few days. French immersion. Trois Rivières. Why is that? Is that in Toronto? That sounds so familiar. Love your blather. I think it's yeah blather. Yeah. Marlene's from Granby, Quebec. I don't know where Granby is. Yeah, I wish I'd ever have a 10 either. Yeah, that's, uh, I think it's almost a theoretical thing. Like, I don't even know if it exists. This is, you know, but average for me is, I'm on, on, on any given day, it's more like a six and a half to seven, which is really goddamn annoying. <laughs> so a six is really annoying. It's like, it's like you, there's like a, Someone's pestering you, and you're kind of like, Jesus Christ, just go away, stand back. Seven is 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 you're approaching pain. You're definitely not. You're hurting. So, someone's texting me. Hold on a second. Let me just quickly just check. Just gotta reply really quickly. Yeah, so every day it varies between six and a half, seven and a half. That's a pretty normal day. So <laughs> I'm in a bad mood a lot, <laughs> and it's not not intentional. I don't mean to be in a bad mood. It's just <clears throat> one of those things. It's a good thing because I'm normally a very patient person, so, well, with some things, I'm very patient. <laughs> With some things, I'm very patient. That's what I was just saying, right? Okay. Maybe if I want to fix this area here. I want to fix this. It's much more of a curve, so it comes in here. Yeah, I know. I've been wanting to do that for a little while. And this is darker. Yeah, it's more of like a swerve like this. He's got some curves here. Oh yeah, so don't try to copy him directly. I think. And he's got this crazy weird rock thing. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. He did this, he went like this. And he kind of went like this. Really dark blue, it's like. And then he had light blue in it. Much lighter and less intense. More like a gray. More like a gray. Okay, I'm just gonna, oh, yuck. That's not the color at all. I'm just gonna, oh, that's a, too intense. I need to put some orange in there. Gray it up a bit. Okay, so let's just say that's his little rock thing. There's more of it, nah, I need more grayish I wish you'll never have a 10 no man I don't want no guy named 10 PQ I don't know what that means Grabby's 45 minutes from Montreal 7 yeah 7 is not fun but 7 is sort of like like my norm to some degree like you know, 
when they go to the dog park, dog parks actually kind of suck because uh, I'm susceptible to loud noises, which is ironic. But loud noises are, are extra disturbing for me. So there's sometimes some dogs that are just very barky and they kind of like, it's just kind of like snap, snap in your ear. Ah, well. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay. Da -da 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 -da. You know what's a funny show? Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's a funny show. This is just me talking about nonsense, just because I, I have a feeling this thing might decide to come back. It's like it's like on the verge. It's like I get, get premonitions of of this sound effect. Your style reminds me of Van Gogh. Yeah, well, I love Van Gogh. I was into Van Gogh since I was a kid. Very, very young. So, for sure. Uh, but I've done many, many, many different styles. This thing is like, what you're seeing right now is just a s tiny subsection of of the stuff that I've done. Tiny, like I've, I've tried realism. I've tried, ex you know, fauvism, German expressionism. I've tried, uh, like, just so many different things. And right now, this is this is just basically this is I'm literally calling it stealing, you know, let's face it, it was Jackson's painting. So, but uh, I do like Van Gogh's stuff, no question about it. Kind of bummed out he's as popular as he is because it makes you feel like oh well. <clears throat> anyhow, <clears throat> the trick is. To make your make something original, that's always. Uh, I have a kind of a goal. My goal is to be the opposite of what. Well, no, I'm not actually purposely being the opposite, but I think it is the opposite of what a lot of modern art is, which is nonsensical, which is based on shock value, which is based on stuff that I think is embarrassing, in that it's intellectually simple it's like just it's a simpleton's point of view so a lot of modern art i think is absolute bullshit is mental masturbation it's pompous it's 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 it's, it's uh it's like rejection of things that are probably but closer to human nature so i'm more of a fan of uh so trying to make something beautiful because i'll tell you it's easy to do shocking i could do shocking i could create you know there's and there's no question in my mind I, I still want like I would like to do some things that might be shocking to but for the right reasons but when someone just does things that are only shocking to me it's boring I feel like I'm embarrassed for you as an artist for doing stuff like that so what I'm trying to say is I would I'm gonna tr I'm still trying I'm still trying to make something that is beautiful because there's some sort of intrinsic for sure cultural but something more intrinsically beautiful, right? Something that, and it's not, and I don't want to do something pretty. I don't care about pretty. Like, I'm not trying to do something that you'd want to necessarily just hang up over your, your mantelpiece, you know? That's not my goal at all. 
for something where it's like human, it's human emotion, it's human nature, something along those lines. Oh, we got more. Are you coming? Nice. You seem to paint most of the landscapes. No. <laughs> so Jocelyn, I've probably done about a thousand pieces in my life, paintings and stuff. I would say I have to check, but maybe 30% were landscapes. The vast majority of stuff are not landscapes. So go to Druckmann. Here, let me show you. If you go to where's the where's wait, let me show you what I'm talking about. There's no way for you to you know this, so this is no big deal. But if you go to let me show you. Open up a browser and go to uh, Druckmann.com. That's my website. So my last name is Druckmann. Just go to Druckmann.com and wait for it to come up. It's kind of slow right now. Here you go. If you go on gallery, you can view by latest collection, by year, by subject, by medium. If I click on view by subject, so I've got portraits, self-portraits, the human body, people, nature. There's the one that's nature. Abstract places, still life, imaginary animals. And then you can view, view by mediums, like, you know, like painting, mixed media. So, so if I just go to say just portraits, here's some of the portraits I've done. I've got, so, and you can click on each one. If you click on the picture, it'll, it'll blow up a, uh, a photo, uh, sorry, no, a, a, res, uh, a picture of it. And then if you click on the title, it'll take you a page with a high res version. And also I've been, you know, over time I'll get this all done. There'll, there'll be videos of me working on it. So like, like these live videos, I, I've, I've been slowly posting. So there's a high res version of this, of this, this is a commissioned piece of someone's uh, granddaughter. And then this was a, actually, this was a time-lapse painting of me painting it. But I stopped doing time lapses because it's too much work. It's easier for me to do that. So, okay, so these are just portraits I've done. And you can click on the next page. So, loads the next page. So, let's wait till it loads. Okay, this is my aunt. This is a good friend. This is my second cousin. That was my rabbi. That was my grandmother. This is a girlfriend. This is my first oil painting of my art teacher's wife. This is my principal high school. And this was a nurse. At, like, you had to click on nurse. Okay, so that's just portraits. Let's go back to subject. And then I can go to human body, say. So these would be just categories. Of, these are probably more like studies and drawings and stuff I've done over the years. Yeah. Oh, this was kind of funny. I did it. This is just a, uh, I was, so I used to do martial arts. So they asked me to do a mural. So I did this mural behind it. And then I asked the guy to do a, a kick. So it matched it. So that's just a photo. But I did a bunch of like, oh yeah. So, so there's quite a few like, um, life drawing studies these are either, these are most of them were either like this was when i was living in japan this was a live model and then some would be ex-girlfriends so i didn't put their names down i didn't put you know because they're still alive <laughs> so there might be ex-girlfriends that i've drawn or or um what the hell like or some i made up like i made up this one right yeah so some of those are ex-girlfriends and this was like at art school, just like a model or something. So there's quite a few of live, you know, there's going to be four pages of this. Uh, let's go back. And they all go back historically in time. So they start from most recent to the, the oldest. So let's just see how far back I went. Like I might have gone, okay, yeah. So each one of these would be, there's like a drawing. Okay. I'm going to go to gallery. My subject. What else can you see? Um... Animals, yeah. I, I, I mean, this just happens to be that I, you know, I like animals and I've painted a bunch of my pets and stuff. And so I guess this is where it might fall in. So let's look at animals. Oh, okay, so this is a friend of mine's dog and cat. This is just, I had an idea for a story. So it was a whale. I just made up this one. This I used to have a parrot, so it was an African gray. So I did a, it looks like I did a, an acrylic and this was like a watercolor. So I just, that was like probably in 1990. So there's animals. What else can we see? What is let's look at still lifes. I don't I never liked doing still lifes, to be honest. Still lifes are over there. But let's just take a look at what I've done. Yeah, I've done a lot of still lifes when I think about it. There's five pages of these. 
So you go back in time. Gallery. I'm just taking a break from painting. Human body, people, nature, abstract. Look at abstract. Now these are these are. I mean, they're still works that I still haven't photographed. Yeah, so I did lots of abstract. This was the, some of these are from a series that I did called Paradelia. Paradelia. Um, so these are all quite large. And some are like, you know, just drawings that are kind of like nonsensical. Those are fun to do. I'm just going back in time. All right. So I guess the point is you can sort of tell I've done landscapes, sure, but I've done way more non-landscapes. I've done some big ones. Coming up, I'm pretty sure are some really big ones, like eight feet by six feet kind of big. Oh, yeah, that four kinds. Yeah, so these ones were eight. These are like eight feet by six feet or something, something really large. In fact, I only have a photograph of a photograph, so it doesn't look good. It's got like that really bright spot right in the middle. These were, yeah, so this is when I had a painting studio. So this would have been in, okay, it's 48 by 92. That was in 1995. Yeah, so I was, I was into doing these very large, but you can see how, look how crappy the photograph is. So this is, might've been the shine from the gloss from me taking a photo of the photo. <laughs> or, or I cropped this photo, which is a photo of, of, literally of a photo of a photo. All right, so there you go. Yeah, so not really all new landscapes, done um, billions of other stuff. How do I move it over? I look like this. Okay, so let me go back to, all right. Uh, I'll go take a look. Oh, right, cool. Where's your last name from? And landscapes are probably more marketable in the mainstream, right? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, to be honest, I'm 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 shitty at the selling part. I I've really avoided trying to sell anything because what I've learned is only rich people can buy original paintings. And you're, the way you find them is, is it has to be through personal networks. So I had a show where there were a whole bunch of rich people, and I sold, sold, excuse me, I sold a whole bunch. But the the reality is, it's just not. It's I could just you know, people who, to afford original artwork, which you have to sell it at a certain price just to, just to make it worth your while. And you can't sell too. You, sometimes you can't. You know, you can't undersell yourself too because. You know, there's a problem is that you've got a bunch of people bought artwork from you before. Suddenly you sell cheap. You know, you don't want to piss off people who paid a certain amount. And you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's, it's tricky. So mainstream, I don't even know what that means. You know, art is such a weird business. I mean, my goal is, is I would like to get into the money, money laundering level. I want to get to the level where people buy your art because they want to like, launder their money that's what all the, the most expensive art's about whoops expensive art isn't, isn't that good it's just about rich people allowing having a mechanism to like let's not kid ourselves these are a lot of the art is just just nothing that special about a lot of the modern art like what's this guy's name the one guy i was never a fan of from the beginning um, what's that guy's dude he's like the richest guy in the world uh, damien hurst I look at that and just go, Bleh. like the same thing. I, I look at uh, Andy Warhol. I've always been, Bleh. and also the, what of his little friend, the dude um, who died young. What was the, the little black guy? What's his name? Um, fuck. This stuff is just like, I look at it and go, give me a break. Fuck off, pompous twat. What's that guy's name? He does like, a, I'll, I'll remember the name. I forget his name. I just, it, it doesn't impress me. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. The only people who have ever really impressed me has been Van Gogh's impressed me. Uh, Klimt has impressed me. Chagall, I, I've been brainwashed to like, so I just can't help but liking Chagall's stuff. Because when you th think about it, Chagall's stuff is not well painted. It's not It's not that good. But he's got a, a romantic kind of story Chagall has that I can't help like because that was very much ingrained in me from a young age. I can't remember what I was just talking about. Basquit, that's it, basquit. That's mostly crap.
But again, all this is personal opinion. Everyone can believe what they want. They could say it's great or not. I don't give a shit. It's, it's just the people of the money who decide, really, ultimately. You know what I'm saying? So I have no say in mainstream. Well, yeah, mainstream doesn't matter. I don't even know what that means. I'm rambling right now. By the way, I'm rambling. Rambling. This is a good example of me talking about nothing. And you should just have an automatic mute button to ignore everything that's coming out of my head. Because sometimes I do say things that maybe I, I need to think through a bit more. And sometimes I say things just to like get me through one of these tennis events. Like literally, I, I've, I might be babbling about something I maybe truly don't mean once if I was to think about it. Like put, put some thought into it. So that's why I don't recommend doing what I'm doing because uh, I, for the most part, I don't really care that much. Like you know, like I, I like I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I don't really you know care too much if if I say something wrong, just as long as it's like you know, it doesn't really hurt someone's feelings too bad. Because there are a lot of truthful things that would hurt someone's feelings. You know what I mean? And I've always been the kind of person that I've been okay with criticism. Literally, you could say just about anything to me. You could criticize me in any way, shape, or form, and it won't bother me. Oh, this is kind of nice. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, I'm going to start down here. He's got some nice stuff, which might be a remnant, actually, of the photograph or not. Oh, I got more text here. My, uh, um, from France... Monet, I love, yeah, I love Monet's, yep. Have you seen Corneau's work? The name doesn't ring a bell, I'll have to look into it. Yeah, Jocelyn Basquiat. Ah, it just makes me annoyed thinking about Basquiat. What a bunch of overhyped garbage. Like, it's fine, this stuff is good, you know, but it's totally not masterful. Like, what I consider, I'm a painter, like, I like painter painters, so. Okay, anyhow, and as, uh, I'm, I'm like, uh, my, I think I'm, background is like uh white russia like the drekman part is white russia so non-communist russia uh, i think is the Druckmann's my dad's side so i want to say like odessa and that kind of thing i, I should know this uh i have to look it up again but i'm like about my my dad my grandmother I think came to Canada as an orphan and she lived in Winnipeg. So she's an orphan in Winnipeg. So I'm third generation Canadian. There's definitely some sort of like Holocaust survival in the background on my dad's side somehow. I gotta I need to look that up a bit more. I shouldn't say definitely, but I'm fairly sure there's something something along those lines. Like I think they were getting out or something, some kind of shitty situation. Yeah, I'd have to look it up again. Talk to my parents. That's one of the things I'm very grateful of. I'm grateful for my parents being alive. They're getting really old, but I'm. Very grateful they're still around. No! See, that's what it matters. There's so many things in life that matter and don't matter. It's kind of the way I see it. Making some progress, eh? It's 
So what I see is done up here is I see I'm looking at some of the brush strokes and I can see I can see why he's made certain decisions. Makes sense to me. Basquit. I think it was all just like about showing off. I guess that's what I don't like. I don't like people who show off. Because I found often people who show off the most get the most attention, but they're not necessarily the best. Like I remember when I went to art school, there was one idiot. He used to walk around in his bare feet, and he was like a talentless, obnoxious twerp. He used to walk around, and I went to Mad Allison Art School, so we're talking cold here, New Brunswick cold. You know, so he walked around in bare feet, you know? I was like, come on, show me show me something. Show me, like, what you can do. I'll be open-minded. Be a weirdo. That's cool with me. I got no problem with being weirdo, you know? But, like, be a weirdo with substance. Don't just be a weirdo because, you know, you like the attention. That, to me, is, like, that's the opposite of what... I guess that's why, like, the privacy is, like, that's, I, I get so turned off by, because uh, I grew up in, an, in a scenario where, for sure, the louder you were, the more attention you got, the more you were able to succeed in, quote, unquote, the real world, for sure. And, but I was never comfortable with that. I was always, like, the quiet one, you know, and I'm, for sure you get passed by when you're the quiet one, for sure. But you know what? I I still I, I couldn't do it because I had like what I thought was self respect. Like I, I couldn't bring myself. But some people just have no shame. You know what I mean? They'll they'll do things to they'll do things. That I just couldn't I couldn't do it. You know and that's that's part of when you talk about mainstream. Part of it is like your ability to sell yourself, and uh, that's one thing I've done the opposite. I unsell myself because I can't stand. The, att the narcissistic attention that some people crave. It's a bit of a dilemma. It's a dilemma when you want to be quote unquote successful because I've had a bunch of people who recently, like, there's two people who recently. Literally, we were interested in a painting, and they said, how much? Like, the text was, how much? One was a private message. I think one, someone was like, I want to post. And the first thing my my head, my, you know, I thought to myself, I said, fuck you, that's how much. It's like, really? It's just, it was just rude. It was just kind of like, so you, you think because you have money, you can buy me? Like, that's, that's the first thing that went through my head. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm good thing I'm, like, kind of diplomatic, but I really, that's the first thing I was like, Go fuck yourself. I don't want your goddamn money. Like, you're, you know, it's like there's this weird attitude. As soon as you have some money that you can somehow, you know, you're above somebody else. Because that's just not, that's not going to work with me. So I, I don't give a shit how much money you have. I'm not playing that fucking game. How much? <laughs> how about, hey, how's it going? You know, I like your stuff. You know, I'm just curious, you know, what you, you know, if you're willing to sell us what you're, you know, do. And at least I'll be able to respond to some degree. But if you just text me how much. Not so much. <laughs> Fuck some people. And then I get my my sensible friend who says, "He's just asking how much it is. Don't be such a sensitive artist." <laughs> but you gotta realize that you know when I'm doing these, I'm putting my heart and soul into this thing. So it's not like I'm not doing this because I'm trying to make a buck. You know, I'm not doing it for that at all. I'm doing this because like much other reasons that are hell of a lot deeper than just money and this my friends is why you need <clears throat> someone else to sell your artwork you need a buffer so that's why I'm not like going out and trying to sell the stuff right now I'm going to gallery. oh I hate galleries oh my god I've I've known galleries just like the experience is like so snotty like it's like, oh man, anyone who's condescending to me is just that's just the wrong 
this is just not going to work out because like you know fucking i've i've danced with world leaders literally i've like you know just like just be a normal person and we'll get along just fine but as soon as you start giving me some attitude you're talking to the wrong person because i don't give a shit just be a good person just be an, like a honest in fact actually some of the most powerful people i've met were just were actually just treated me nicely just nicely that's it and it's the ones that are like on their path to power yeah, those are the ones that are the biggest dicks. All right, so, well, I'm jealous. Most of my creation time is taken up by designing art that little kids can do and not for myself. Yeah, I know, but that's a job, though, right? You know, that's, I get it. Show me the money. <laughs> I like it. Show me the money. That's right on. Show me the money. Actually, I'm working on a couple bigger Monet type stuff. I wonder if I could show it to you. This is one. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna screw up the cat. You know what? How about this? I'm gonna take a break from painting because it feels like it's been an hour, and I'm gonna quickly show you my studio over here, where I've got a, uh, some of my larger paintings that I'm working on. And check this out. You want to see Monet? I don't know. If, I don't know if I'll be able to pull it out that well here I'm gonna have to uh, zoom out okay so I've been meaning to work on some of these larger paintings like this one is a uh, kind of a Monet. I don't know if I'll be able to uh, show it. Woo. So this one, on the bigger side, that's four feet. That's like six, five or six feet. Is that six feet? Maybe it's five feet. I don't know. But uh, when I stand next to it, you see it's, it's kind of larger. The perspective of the camera is really there's a big difference. Like when I go, like I stand next to it. So it's actually kind of a, a large size painting. Beep. And I'm six feet and I'm like 350 pounds. So, you know, it's actually quite large. So I've been meaning to go back and work on these ones. And this is a Monet, there's Cheryl's Bench. And this is the Allegory of the Cave by Socrates. Socrates, Socrates, Socrates. And uh, yeah, so that's next for me. I'm gonna, uh, Oh, let's look at this one in comparison. So that's how big this painting is compared to the stuff that I've been doing for a long time, which is the bigger ones. So that's how it looks from a distance. Hmm. Anyhow, that's where I think I'll stop for, for now. It's coming along, but we'll see how it goes. Anyhow, thanks for watching, folks. I might do another painting. It's 4 o'clock here. I might do some more. Later today, I might not. We'll see. Anyhow, talk to you later.